okay so I just uh, because this is going to be in 2.4 okay so I'm going to bring it up here they give you the library of function if you like but I'm going to describe what it's going to be the graph of okay what's going to be the graph the graph of a piecewise defined function okay this is it piecewise defined defined function you one question on this one on your next quiz and the test and there are going to be two possibilities for this graph so this is going to be the example you know that just cash graph in some point but for this one some special points would be fine okay so we would like you to sketch sketch the graph okay the graph of each function of each function for the purposes of those courses there are two possibility so this is going to be the first one the first one and we give a function that is defined by two equation okay and you get four in your assignment and so the function is going to be something like a 3x minus one okay this is where x is less than negative one it's a negative one and we have something like x plus two when x is greater than or equal to the negative one so this function as you can see it's partitioned at negative one so when you graph this uh, piecewise defined function we graph each section separately each part separately so the first part is y equal to the three x minus one because the degree of the x is one so this is going to be a straight line and the second one is, is the same thing. All of them is going to be a straight line. So the difficulty is this partition point. This partition point. Uh, this, you know, when you graph it, there are two possibilities. Uh, you may be able to join them together at the partition point. You say that's going to be one. In calculus, we say that the graph is continuous. Or you may not. If you may not, you know, this is the first part and this is the second part. So they are going to be disjoint. They are going to be disjoint. So this means that partition point is very important. Okay, so the way I suggest to graph it is we focus on that partition point. And you better follow this, especially if you want to continue with your, your next course, okay? Because that partition point is very, very important. Okay, so uh, we need a couple of points to graph it, and this is the suggestion. So we are going to graph each part. So we graph the first part, y equal to the three x minus one with the restriction of x less than negative one. You see, you must make sure that you are not going to go over and negative one. So in order to make sure that we are not going to go over, you see this is a straight line. We, get, we need two points only. So it's going to be your x and this is going to be y, three x minus one. My suggestion is pick the negative one first. As soon as I put this one in calculus, it's oh, x is not equal to negative one. We know that going to take care of it because we have to graph it up to the negative one you see up to the negative one so we get the negative one to find out what is what does it mean up to the negative one okay but then we take care of it so go for this negative one all the time okay and you need something less something less to make sure that you go to the left not to the right okay less and close would be something like a negative two you can pick any other number you like but this is going to be a suggestion that we have okay so start with negative one to make sure that you are not going to go over okay and go down go down just one level so if we substitute so this is going to be three times a negative one minus one okay that make it to the negative four and we put the negative two so going to be three times a negative two minus one negative six negative seven okay uh, this is it i missed it yes no that's a negative one three times negative one negative three minus four and this is going to be negative seven okay we are going to graph this portion first so this is going to be the case we have two points negative one and negative four identify the negative one this is a negative one negative four suppose this is one two three I'm sorry uh, negative one negative four so it's going to be one 
one, two, three, and four. This is a negative four, so uh, this is going to be the point. Okay, this is going to be a negative one and the, and the negative four. But, you see now, for the negative one, you don't have equality sign. Since you don't have the equality sign, this means this point is not going to be on your graph. So since it's not going to be on the graph, you make a hole here, you see? That's the way we took care of that negative one. So the advantage is you have up to the negative one. You see, you have up to the negative one. So if this is going to be equal to, you make it solid point here. Okay, if it's going to be equal to, you make it solid, means you have it. If you don't have it, you get the negative one. You see, we haven't done anything wrong. Okay, so the next case is a negative two, negative seven. So this is going to be negative two, negative seven. That was what? That was a four. Then we go to the five, six, and the negative seven. Okay, negative seven. So that's going to be a negative seven, and this is going to be a negative two. Now it's going to be your next point. Anything to the left is part of your function. Okay, so you connect and you go to the left only. You see? So we have up, everything up to the negative one. Up to the negative one. Everything up to the negative one, but not negative one. You see, not negative one, because I make a hole here. Any question? If you pick any other number, you see some people, they don't pick the negative one. They start with the negative two. So they give us a negative two, then I put a question mark for you. I ask what would happen between negative two and negative one. You see, that's why you better play it safe. You pick the negative one, if there is no equality sign, just take it out. Okay, take it out and make a hole. If there is gonna be equality sign, then you are going to make it, okay, make it, make it solid, that's one. The red one is just a graph of the function. This is going to be the graph of y equal to the 3x minus 1. It's going to be a straight line. So the graph of your function, when x is less than negative 1, is going to be this, this portion over here. Any question? So you are not going to go over, you see, you cannot go up. Why? Because you have up to the, up to the negative 1, up to the negative 1. And that's why you pick the negative 1. You must tell us what would happen for the graph of the function up to the negative 1. Okay, any question? So that's the first part. That's the first part, you are going to do the same for the second part. What is the function? Y equal to the x plus two. So do the same thing. Y equal to the x plus two. What's the restriction? Greater than equal to the negative one. So you must make sure that you are above the negative one. So that's why, that's why when you pick the, want to pick the points, this is going to be your x, okay? And this is going to be y, which is x plus two. Okay, again, you start with the negative one. Negative one, because this is your limit. But it's going to be negative one up. So you need something up. Up, okay, something bigger than negative one, like zero. Okay, like zero, you substitute. So that gives you a negative one plus two, which is going to be equal to the one. Okay, you put the zero, so that gives you zero plus two, which give you, okay, which give you two. Any question? That's it, we have two points, go back and get this graph. Negative one and one, this is a negative one. Negative one and one, this is one. So negative one and one would be exactly above this. So do you have this point or not? You see negative one, there is the equality sign. Since there's a quality sign, you make this one a solid point. You see, at the negative one for the first one, you don't have it, it's empty, because we didn't have equality sign. But the second one, we do have it, because there is a quality sign here. And you know that both of them cannot be solid. Remember the other night, the vertical line test. Each vertical line intersect the graph at one point only. So one of them must be empty. The bottom one is already there. Okay, any question? So that's a negative one and one. The other point zero and two, zero two, two. This is zero two. 
you connect and of course you go to the right this time okay you go to the right this is going to be the graph of your function it's a piecewise defined function you have two portion when x is less than negative one this is your graph okay if you want to take a point here you see this is this is going to be used this one but when x is greater than negative one greater than negative one you have to use the green one so the green one is the second portion the red one is the okay the other portion Wait, you were not able to yes what's the question aren't the coordinates negative one positive one negative one positive one ah, i missed it okay i have to come up a little bit thank you so uh, this is negative one and positive one you are right so i have to start with this one Okay, this is the point, thank you. So this is the one, I'm sorry. You're right. So I have it a little bit up here. Okay, this is going to be the line. Okay, I don't have these bits. So this is going to be just a, okay, this is going to be a solid point. Okay, a solid point. This is a negative one and positive one. Okay, and when X is less than negative one, this is going to be your function. Okay, so the red one is x less than negative one, is strictly less than, you don't have the equality, and the green one is going to be to the right, greater than negative one. That's why you have to start with that negative one to make sure that you know, you guarantee that your graph is going to be on a, on a proper place. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the case. So what's question? I correct this one. The, this is going to be the case. Okay, x greater than negative one. So we have to pick something bigger than negative one. I pick this zero, so that give me this point. Okay, you connect them together and you go up. Any question? If you are going to be in calculus, we like this one. Uh, we say this graph is discontinuous. This continuous means there are two parts. Continuous means just one, you know, one piece, if you like. And these uh, type of graphs are the crunch of calculus, and we use it quite a lot. Okay, and they argue with me. And as soon as I give them the first test, they didn't use the negative one. I don't accept the graph. They argue whatever. Oh, I don't. You shouldn't get this negative one. No, I didn't take it. It's like I invite you to come for a party. You didn't come, but your seat is here. Okay, your seat is empty because you didn't come. Okay, and so make sure you get these two numbers in order. Any question? That's the one that's going to be discontinuous. I'm going to give you another one. It's going to be the one that you'll be able to connect them together. Okay, and we want to make it a little bit more exciting. Okay. So we give you two on the test. Okay, two on the test. So what's going to be the next one? The next one is f of x equal to, it's a very famous graph. And most of the people, they missed it. So what's going to be this graph? Uh, you see when the power of the x is one, this is just a straight line. If the power of x is higher, it's going to be curvy linear. We are going to make it, you know, something easy like, uh, easy like uh, x squared okay uh, suppose this is uh, going to be x squared uh, for okay for x uh, to be less than one okay less than one and then when x is equal to one x is equal to one we are going to call this one four if you like okay four but when x is greater than one when x is greater than one, we are going to call this one, some, for some reason, we call it x. It's a very popular graph, you know, for calculus. Or you have it in your book, you have one with a, a kind of three equations. Okay, so this graph is, uh, this function is partitioned around the one. When x is less than one, it's x squared. When x is greater than with x, when x is equal to 1, when x is equal to 1, the value of the function is 4. Okay, so it's three pieces, 1, 2, 3. 
the middle piece is just one point. Okay, one point. So let's graph each portion one by one. Okay, are you ready? So what's going to be the solution of this one? We are going to graph the first part first. Okay, so what's the first part? Y equal to the X squared. Again, with the restriction that X is less than one. Okay, X is less than one, so let's get some points. So this is going to be over X. This is going to be Y equal to the X squared. Okay, we have to start with the one. This is one and up, sorry, one and down. Okay, down, uh, you may pick zero. It's X squared. If you feel uncomfortable, you may pick another number. When it's curvy linear, pick a couple of them. Okay, it's X squared. Okay, so uh, put X equal to one. <clears throat> that give you one squared, which is one. Okay, X equal to the zero, that give you zero. Negative one squared would be would be one. Okay, because it's x squared, just pick you know the couple of more points to play safe. So let's graph this part. It's going to be a curve. <coughs> okay, so we have a one one. This is going to be one, and this is one. So this is going to be one one. <coughs> But one is a partition point. You check, you don't have equality sign. So we have to make a hole here. Okay, we make a hole here. Then we continue, we get to the zero, zero. This is gonna be zero, zero. Zero, zero, then we get the negative one and one. Okay, we get negative one and one. This is gonna be a negative one. Okay, negative one and one. This is another point. You know that this is a parabola. It's a curve, so when you connect the point together, you are not going to connect it by the straight line. So what you're going to have is, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be your curve. Okay, start from here and go on forever. Okay, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. So this is X less than one. X less than one. Any question? Now the second part. The second part is just a point. Okay, you see the second part? The second part, this is X, and this is Y. X, Y. When X is one, Y is four. One and four. Just identify it, one, four. X equal to one, four is one, two, three, four. This is one and four. One and four, you make a solid, it's just a point. You see, you cannot have two solids at the same time. So that's fine. This is empty, but this is, it's up there. Okay, any question? So that's the second part. Now bring the third part. Okay, what's the third part? The third part is, uh, the third part is this function. What is the, the third part? The third part is y equal to the x, with the restriction that x is greater than one. So it's just a straight line, so I need two couple of points. So this is going to be my X and this is going to be Y, which is the same as the X. The point I start with the one, one up two. Okay, Y is equal to the X, that give me one, that give you two. Okay, go back, identify these points. So a one, one, this is one, one. But are you going to fill it up? No. You don't have greater than equal to. So this is going to be your point and it's empty. Okay, it's going to be empty because X is not equal to one. Then the next point is going to be two, two. It's going to be two, two. This is going to be two. Okay, and this is two. So that gives you two, two. So this is the first one, the second one. And it's a straight line. So from here, there, okay, it is going to be the straight line. That gives you the graph of the function. You see, it's very nice graph. Uh, to the left, when x is less than one, is the curve, it's a parabola. It's parabola up to the one. After one is a straight line, a straight line. But uh, at the, you see, at this point, x equal to one, the parabola is empty because you don't have the equality. Or the straight line is empty because you don't have the equality. 
But where is the other one? When x is equal to one, it's a point here. It's very nice graphing calculus. Again, it's a discontinuous because of this isolated point here. Okay. They are not all joined. Point at two, does that one have to be open? Which one? No. No, it, oh, no why not? X is greater than one? Yeah, it's greater than one forever. No, no, no. You, you've got to be worried about only about the partition point. You see? Because X greater than one forever. So everything greater than one would be fine. The one is a partition point, okay? If you get X equal to one or otherwise. No, we worry about the, at the partition point, at partition point is gonna, you see, if you don't follow my instruction and focus on the partition point, this graph would be in a mess when you graph it. Some people, they miss it, you know, they, they graph it. They give me three separated pieces, okay? Which doesn't make sense at all for this type of graph. Okay? What do you mean by what is uh, exactly is the answer? You can see it, nice answer. The answer is the graph of the function. You've been asked to sketch the graph and we sketch the graph for you, that's it. They ask you to sketch the graph of the function. This is the graph of the function. Okay, is it three parts? You see if you're giving just one part, yes, you, part, you graph a straight line. This is the graph of the piecewise divine function. A function that's defined by several, several equations. So when you graph it by several equation, it can be, it can be anything. And this is going to be a situation that we're going to have. Okay, you know, it, it would happen. You may look at the different graphs that you, you know, if you watch the news and they give us such a graph, they say, oh, you see the, the situation was this one. Okay, from last, uh, what's that? June up to the October, that was the, okay, that was the distribution. After that, it was all up, 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 you see coronavirus. So from this point up, everything is increasing. There is a surge, if you like, that's gonna be the one. But over here, sometimes you are done, sometimes you are up. So that's what would happen in science only. These uh, type of graph and the distribution that you are going to know, you're going to have. Okay, so uh, make sure that you know you are able to take care of this uh, type of, I told you, the other night, somebody asked me what I need for calculus. I said, piecewise divine function. You know, when you are college algebra, quotient, difference quotient, difference quotient, piecewise divine function. If you understand these two over there, you'll be fine. Okay, but you know, they give you some examples again. So these are the group of functions at, at the beginning in mathematics. They didn't believe it, that we may have this type of function. Okay, three parts. No, they believe that an equation of a function must have one equation only. Okay, so get to know them. These are going to be the one that you are going to, you know, be involved in future. And it's not difficult. Uh, professor, yes. I have a question. So, um, can you use um, one when it's um, like x is less than one? Is it? Would you still be able to use one? When it's like of course. X, uh, X is less than or equal to one? I didn't use the one. You see, I pick the one. I like, pick the one to estimate it. Then I take it out. Oh, I see. It is a hole here, you see. If you don't pick the one, what's going to be your choice when it's less than one? Give me a number. Give a number, less than one. Zero. Zero. So your graph would start from here. You see? If you pick the zero, that gives you zero, zero. So then you are going to give us this part as your graph, okay? So what do you miss? You are going to miss the region between zero and one. You see? That's the one. So your graph is not up to the one that we talk about it. All right, yeah, that oh. makes sense. You see, that's one, and that's very crucial, very crucial for this type of function because the limit is, you see, up to one. How many numbers do you have less than one? You see, infinity, many numbers. When you say up to one, you, when I say pick a number less than one, 
if you are going to be in science, you are not going to pick the zero. You pick point nine 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 nine. This is what you pick if you are in physics, chemistry, business. So the point point nine 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 is very really close to what over here. Okay, that's why we estimate it. We estimate it. We pick one, then we take it out. Okay, that's the that's the purpose of this. When you look for it, to it from this this interpretation really of uh, of application in future. That's the way we apply the the piecewise defined function. So that crucial point, that partition point, doesn't matter. Pick one. I take it out. I take it out. But you cannot, you know, find any difficulty with my graph because I give you everything up to the one. Okay, everything up to the one, everything but not one. So that's why focus on the partition point. If you don't pick the partition point, your graph is not complete. Okay, so pick that number that will help you. Pick that number, estimate, you know, the situation of your graph, then throw it out by taking these values. A statistic, you see all these type of functions that you're going to have. So there are quite a lot. And you have some nice one in your book. That's a, that's a Larson book, you know, it's a very good one. Okay, any question? So get to know them. This is, you know, this is the way we argue about these type of functions. You have a four or three in your book and I've already assigned all of them. So we give you, we give you, let me give you another one to see maybe that will help you to I just give you this one because this is a very popular and uh, you have a couple of them in your book so just you know to handle this tab we give you something as straightforward on the test or the quiz but why not you have to get no you know analyzing the graph when we get these numbers as I told you a situation of something sometimes they say from now on is linear linear mean this one you see Somebody got a fever, for example. You see, this is over here. Over here, the fever is decreasing. Decreasing suddenly, you know, the situation of patient different, changed. The fever is increasing. Okay, increasing at the, you know, these levels. Then from now on, this is going to be a linear. Linear means you, you can predict what would happen from now on, okay? It's not going to be up and down. It's just up, 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 up. So that's the situation. Okay, let's give you another one. The type that you are going to get these uh, connection together. This is again a popular function. So what is going to be this one? You want to graph this, you know, f of x equal to, let's have f of x equal to the, let's say negative x plus two, when x is less than two. Okay. This is going to be an x less than two, and this is going to be x minus two when x is greater than or equal to two. Very popular function. Okay, it's partition at two. We want to graph it. Okay, there you are. Solution. Graph each partition separately. So you have to separate it. So this is going to be two. The restriction is up to two. So you have to tell us up to two what would happen. So that's why we estimate the two. This is x, y equal to the negative x plus two. Okay, as I told you, we want to, the limit is two, so get the two first. Something less, like one. Okay, you put the two, it's going to be negative two plus two, which is zero. You put the one, negative one plus two, which is one. Okay, graph this one. You graph it. So what's the point? Two, zero. Two, zero. This is going to be the point. So do you have it or not? You see, x is less than two. Less than two means you don't have it. You make a hole. Okay, for that partition point, you have to decide. Other points, no. Okay, so it's going to be two zero. Two zero is going to be on the x-axis, this point. But since you don't have the equality sign, you take it out. One, 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 one. This is one, one. One, one. 
you connect but it's the list you go to the left you connect and you go to the left forever this is the graph of the first part any question x less than two okay x less than two but we give you everything up to the two this uh, function is not defined at x equal to two because there is no equality sign over here and you identify it on the graph by making a hole here okay now the second part the second part y equal to the x minus two with the restriction of x up two up so get some points this is x this is y okay y is equal to the x minus two you start with the two okay that give it two minus two which is zero okay something up above two three so that give it three minus two which is equal to one okay any question go to the same x y plane and identify this point two zero where is it two zero two zero do you have it yes because it's equal to so it's not going to be whole anymore you have to fill up this hole you see you didn't have for the first part but the second part is the same thing you see two zero two zero but since you have it you make it you make it solid then three one three one and this is one this is another point and you have to go to the right this time you see to the right this is your graph so in this case there is no hole the graph is one piece only we call it the continuous graph okay it's a very popular graph it's a graph of the absolute value and we are going to talk about it later on okay so as you can see uh, sometimes you may be able to you know the graph is defined so that you may be able to, to connect them together. Connect them together as one piece. But sometimes it's not the case. You see the, the other one that we did? At the partition point, they were separated. We call them discontinuous, but this one is going to be called continuous, okay? Continuous graph. Okay, so two possibilities. We usually give you two to graph for us on the test, okay? One is going to be the one that you connect them together, nice. And the other one is going to be discontinuous one. Okay, any question? So that's the notion of the piecewise defined function and the way we are going to we are going to graph it for us. Okay, now what we are going to do is uh, we are not going to uh, consider any complicated graph, okay? So as you go on, each graph would have its own uh, uh, okay properties if you like. So uh, we are going to see is uh, sometimes some graphs are very popular. We call them, you know, original one, parent graphs, if you like. And then, uh, if you want to, uh, you may you may change it. You see, uh, I have uh, y equal to the x squared. I know that it's a parabola. I may have y equal to the x squared plus four, x squared minus four. So there are some uh, relationship between this combination of the graph and the original one. So I'm going to uh, talk about the, some of them for you, okay? Uh, not complicated one. Uh, you are going to later on, uh, you may, you may or you may not take the trigonometric course, okay? Sine, cosine, etc. or you may not. So these are going to be the action that we can use in future. How are we going to get a complicated graph from a original one, okay? So there are some action that we're going to talk about it. This is the idea of, it's very easy uh, section, uh, 2.5. We call it transformations of a function. Let's see what does it mean. Any question on the piecewise divide? So uh, we get practice. We are going to give you practice on your next take on one, practice one, and even on the final view one of these piecewise defined functions. Okay, so uh, what is going to be the idea of uh, this uh, section, uh, easy section 2.5, is uh, how are we going to get the graph of a function uh, from an easy one, if you like. 
from some original one, if you like. So uh, this is uh, 2.2.6. Uh, okay. So let's go to the 2.6. 2.6, uh, they call it, you know, we get one graph and we change it to the other one. So they call it transformations. Okay. Transformations. Okay, transformations of functions. Of functions. You see, sometimes we have a function. You multiply by 2. You multiply by 7. You change the x, you change the y. We want to know what's the relationship between this operation and the function, and what will happen to the graph of the function, okay? That's the idea of, uh, okay, the idea of this uh, section. Now, uh, we just uh, uh, using uh, some uh, easy functions, okay? So I'm going to identify these functions. Uh, so uh, we give you a remark. So what I'm going to do is, in this section, if you like, in this section, the following graph. The following, uh, okay, graphs uh, of function, functions, okay, are going to be used. Okay, or can be used. Can be used. You can use it anytime you like. Okay. So what's going to be this graph? Easy graph. Uh, the first one is y equal to the x squared. Remember, it's a parabola. You can, you know, can graph it, giving some uh, some numbers. Okay. Uh, so we already talk about it. So this is, you know, if you like. I can give a couple of numbers so that you make sure you remember it. So remember x equal to the zero, y would be zero, x equal to the one, this would be one, and the negative one, one. So this is the graph. So it's gonna be a parabola, it's a zero, zero. You get the one, one, this is one, one, and this is a negative one, one, okay? So we can use it anytime you like. So it's going to be the graph of y equal to the x squared. Okay, and this is a negative one, and this is a positive one. So these points, you know, we already talked about it, point one, one, and negative one, one. So uh, this is going to be a parabola. You can use it anytime you like. I'm just going to use a couple of them. The second one that I'm going to use is y equal to the x cubed. Remember, we checked this one before. Okay, we checked this one before, and if you like, this is going to be x, and this is going to be y. If you put x equal to zero, that gives you zero, one, one. And if you get the negative one, that gives you negative one, two. So we did it before. This is it. Okay, this is going to be zero, zero. Then you have a one, one. This is going to be one, one. Remember that's a negative one, negative one. It's going to be negative one, negative one. And this is going to be the graph of this function. I mostly use this one, but uh, this is going to be the case. And that's the second one. I need another one. This is the graph of the absolute value of X. Okay, remember we checked the symmetric property of this one. So if you like, uh, you can uh, check the X and the Y x0, y0, x equal to 1, this is going to be 1, x equal to negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 would be 1 again. And if you want to graph it, you 
grab the zero zero this is going to be zero zero and it's like the, the problem and it's not so this is going to be one one this is one and this is negative one it's going to be just a straight line okay this is going to be the graph of the of the absolute value Okay, I just may use these. There's going to be radical x, 1 over x. I know, I'm not going to use that one. So, uh, we refer to this as, you know, in your book, they refer to it as apparent graphs, known graph. Okay. So, let's see what's going to be the idea of those uh, uh, transformations. Okay. So, this is going to be the case. Now, what we are going to do, you see this function over here. This is y equal to the x squared. So, what we are going to check is if you be given y equal to the x squared, okay, then we can, we can guess what's going to be the graph of y equal to the x squared plus 2 or x squared minus 2. Okay, so y is, you see, if you get a positive 2, this means you change the y, you know, you increase the y by two units, if you like. And y is going to be you going up and down of the y-axis. X, you're going to the right to the left. So we are going to call it this operation as a, as a shifting, if you like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, express or define the operation that I can use okay I can do to these functions to get to the new one so if you give me y equal to the x squared I have the y equal to the x squared so I can graph y equal to the x squared minus 2 right away I can graph y equal to the x squared plus 2 right away I can graph y equal to the x minus 1 parenthesis squared okay these are the operations that we call the transformation of functions it's in the other kind of functions since they change something from the original one, we call them, okay, transformations. So uh, I'm going to explain a couple of them one by one, and then we use it in order to graph more, more functions, okay? So let me tell you that these are the techniques, graphing techniques we call them. Okay, any question? So, so far, these are the one, okay? Keep in mind, this is going to be the graph that we have. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you some, I call them, you know, rather than transformation, I call them graphing techniques, if you like. So, what is going to be graphing? Okay. What is going to be graphing techniques? Okay, that's it. Techniques. The techniques that you can apply uh, to graph a complicated one from the easy one. Okay? So, the first technique that we're going to talk about it, we call it vertical shift. You must know the name because we are going to give you instruction and then you have to apply it. So, what's going to be vertical? Okay, what is the vertical shift? Vertical shift means you are going to move up or pull down a function, if you like, around the y-axis. Okay, this operation is going to be called vertical shift. So suppose that the graph of the function is already given to you, okay, one of these three. So what, uh, what does it mean or how are going to do it? Okay, uh, this is going to be the one. There are two possibilities. The first one is to graph. Okay, to graph uh, this function, y equal to f of x plus k. So you already get y plus x, you know, y equal to the x squared, if you like. You want to graph this one when k is positive. So what I'm going to do is, you are going to graph y equal to the f of x first. Then you raise it, you move it up. Move it up, k units. Okay, so what we're going to do is you are going to raise 
Okay, raise the graph. Raise the graph. Okay, the graph of y equal to the f of x. Okay, f of x by k units. K units. So if you give me y equal to the x squared, I can give you y equal to the x squared plus two. By moving up uh, k units. Okay, let me just give you two cases, then I give you example. So this f of x plus k. How about f of x minus? So the second case is again to graph. Okay, to graph y equal to the f of x minus k. When k is passive number. You graph y equal to the f of x first, then you pull it down, lower it. Okay, so we're going to do this, you're going to lower. Okay, you're going to lower the graph, lower the graph of y equal to the f of x, okay, by k units, k units. Okay, you must know the name, shifting. Okay, shifting up, shifting down. That's it. This is y, you see? This is just the y coordinate. You add k to it, just move it up. This is the y coordinate, you subtract it. If y is equal to four, you have y equal to the sixth, for example. So we should be moving up. Okay, so let's see what does it mean. Example, you want to do a sketch the graph, okay? Sketch the graph, just using these techniques. If you like, in future, you can use it. Okay, a sketch the graph. And the graph is number one. The graph is y equal to the x squared minus two. You see that's going to be the one. You have a choice. You can graph this one if you like. But if you want to use these techniques that we talk about it, you can graph the y equal to the x squared first. Then, since it's x squared minus two, you lower it. Lower it two units. Okay, lower it two units. So if you like, solution, that's a suggestion. Okay, you're going to graph, graph y equal to the x squared first. Okay, and then lower it. Okay, and, and then lower it if you like. Lower the graph. Okay, the graph by two units, by two units. So what does it mean? This means, you see, this is your graph. Graph y equal to the x squared, we already talked about it. You see x squared, remember, this is going to be one, one zero and that was the case so that's the graph of the that is the graph of y equal to the x square okay so this black one is y equal to the x square or the other one so what you can do is you can lower the two units you see this is zero uh, this is uh, this is one and this is a negative one if you like. Okay, this is going to be negative one. At this point over here, this is going to be one one. Okay, and this point over here is going to be negative one one. You see, if you lower it uh, two units, you know, almost. So this is zero, two units down, one two. Your zero would be here now. Okay, so uh, what is going to be this one? This is the y coordinate is one. Two units done, two units done, okay. This is going to be here. Again, two units done, this would be, this would be here. So your graph almost is going to be like this. You see? So with these techniques, with these techniques, you can find the graph of the x squared minus, minus two. 
You see, that's going to be shifting down to get the result. And many things are getting complicated, you know. You, you don't have that trigonometric function. In those cases, it's going to be such a good, you know, good, good graph. Okay, any question? So we just wanted to describe it if it's going to be on the test. And it's not bad. We just give, you know, two units, two units done. So this is zero, the y equal to the zero, you move it down to the units. That give you negative two. You see, this is the negative two. Y over here is one. One minus two, that give a negative one. So that give a negative one here. Okay, and so you pull them out, you pull them down. You can you can pick all of them. If it's going to be graphing paper, graphing paper, you'll be able to find this one, okay, nicely to get these numbers. Okay. What do you mean by what are you proving by solving this? I proving quite a lot. So I'm telling you that I'm telling you you don't know the problem. You see, this is y equal to the x square. How can you get the graph of y equal to the x square minus two using this graph? Okay, using y to the x square. We want to show you that they are all the same. They're all the same. So if you know the parent function, we call this one the parent. If you know the parent, you can find the other one quickly. That's it. That's going to be the idea. We're analyzing the graph. Okay. We're analyzing this, this graph. Okay. Any question? You can, you know, we can ignore it if you don't like it. You can ignore it and graph that one. But that would be useful. And when we question you, we tell you that how we can do it. Okay, you have to explain it for us that we do it. Okay, these functions are easy. So if you give me a complicated function, you will see in a minute how I can use this one to get a nice one. Okay, let's have another one. So it's easy to remember. Shifting down, two units done. Okay, how about something to shift it up? We cannot give you a complicated function because we don't have it. Okay, look at this one. So in this case, you see we can graph y equal to the x squared again. Since the positive one, you move it up. You move it up, okay? So uh, the solution for this one is going to be, okay, the solution is going to be, you graph, okay, you graph y equal to the x squared first, then you push it up, raise it, and, okay, and raise it up. Okay, raise it up, raise it up by one unit, one unit, you see, easy to find. So what's going to be a situation I'm going to have? Okay, I'm going to take it here. Again, we have the parent function, okay, we have the parent function. This is going to be the parent function. Okay, the parent function is y equal to the x squared. Again, you see zero. You get the one. Okay, you get the negative one. So this is going to be the graph of the parent one. Okay, this is your y equal to the x squared. The same thing that we did for the other ones. You see, this is zero. Okay, this is, uh, you get the red one, this one. This is going to be zero. Okay, this is one unit up. So this is a one, one. Okay, and this is going to be what? This is going to be negative one, one. So what are going to do? The x's would stay the same. You just move the y's one unit up. You see, this is y equal to the zero. One unit up is come here. Okay, what is this? You see, this is y equal to the one. One unit up, it would be here. X would be the same. What is this one? It's a negative one. One unit up would be here. So connect them together. Connect them together. You see? This is going to be the graph of what? Graph of x squared plus one. Nice method to get these numbers. Any question? So we get the, this, this is called a shifting vertical shift. Vertical shift, if it's a plus, add it. Add it to the y, the x is stay the same. Okay, if it's negative, subtract it. You lower it down, lower the graph, okay? Any question? That's vertical shift. 
We can use horizontal shift. We can change the X. This is a little bit tricky. Okay, so what's going to be horizontal shift? Going to the right, to the left. Okay, so how about horizontal shift? Okay, horizontal. Horizontal shift. Shifts. Now, this is where you add something to the X. Okay, uh, you have Y could X square. Suddenly you say, oh, I'd like to have X plus two, all the square. Okay, now how are going to do this one? To the right, to the left. So horizontal shifting, again, two cases, case one. Okay, this is it, case one. Case one, to graph, you should look at this one. To graph Y equal to this time, f of x plus something, we call it h. You see y equal to the x squared, you would like to have y equal to the x plus 1 squared. Okay, that's going to be the one for h positive. That's tricky. So we have to move the graph to the right to the left. So we're going to shift. Okay, shift the graph of the parent function. Shift the graph of Okay, the graph of uh, y equal to the f of x. Okay, uh, x. Okay, uh, this is it. H units. Now, when it's a positive, we do it the other way around. We go to the left. Okay, H units to the left. To the, to the left. Okay, we get your graph. You have to get back to the, you know, to the left. And uh, if this is going to be negative, we go to the right. So the next one, uh, to graph y equal to the f of x minus h, when h is positive. This is negative. Negative is to your left, but you go to the right. So you're going to shift, okay, shift the, the graph shift the graph of y equal to the f of x. Okay, h units. Okay, h units, but to the, this is negative, you do the other way around, to the right. To the, to the right. Okay. So, and this is going to be the case. Quite an interesting application. Again, any question? Let's try Again, a couple of examples to see the advantage of these uh, type of graphs. Okay, then you want to sketch this graph. Give you an example. You describe it on the test, you get, you know, you get point for that one. We're going to sketch the graph. Sketch the graph. Going to the right, to the left, give you two. This one. You see y equal to x minus three, all squared. That's it, horizontal shift. So what we're going to do is, we're going to graph y equal to the x squared first. We have to shift it to the right or to the left. This is a negative. Negative is left, but you shift to the right. Okay, so you describe it first, solution. You are going to graph, uh, okay, you are going to graph the y equal to the x squared. First, then, then. Okay, then what we're going to do is, you are going to uh, shift the graph. Okay, uh, shift it. This is negative, but you go to the right to the right. Okay, to the right by three units. Three units. You see, for this one, Y would it stay the same, but you change the X. So there you are. <coughs> you see, again, you need that uh, X squared again. Remember the zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. 
to focus on this one. Okay, that's one. Again, remember this is zero. This is one, and this is a negative one. And the y is, you know, that the y is one unit here. So this point is one, one. We know it, just write it down. Negative one, one. You see now we shifted three units to the, three units to the right. The y would stay the same, you see? Three units to the right, what is that? You see, this is zero. You're gonna start with this one, this is one. X equal to one. Three units to the right, okay? It would be, you get to the four. So that's gonna be one, two, three. So that gives you this point, okay? This is one, you're going to bring it here. One, two, three. Okay, it's going two, three, four. So that's going to be the four. Okay, now the other point, this is zero. Zero, three units. Okay, three units, one, two, three. So the zero would comes here. Okay, so this is one, going to one. Zero comes here and the negative one is here. So the y's are going to be the same. You see the y's are going to be the same. So it's one point. Okay, so uh, this is going to be your graph. Okay, so we shifted to the, okay, we shifted to the, to the right by, by three units. Nice, we get the graph. Okay, any question? So we get the y equal to the x squared first. This is y equal to the x squared. Then you are going to change all the excess three units, okay, to the to the right. If you go three units, you get zero, three units to the right, okay, this is going to be one, two, three. This is your new zero. One, okay, one, two, three. Your negative one, you see negative one here? Negative one, one, two, three. So the negative one would comes here, okay, the zero would comes here, and the one here, okay? So this is it's just the same graph. We just, you know, we just move it to the, okay, to the right. Any question? So that's going to be the one. Yes, of course, we have to grab both of them. Yes. You have to grab both of them to show us you did it. Okay, because we compare them together. We compare them together, this measurement must be correct, you see. Negative one, negative one, Plus three would be two, you see, this is it. You see, this is the point two, if you like, you see, this is two. So the negative one plus, uh, plus three would be two. Zero, okay, zero plus, uh, plus three would be three. One, right, that give you four. Okay, so we want to have it so that we compare them together. Nice, any question? So you can do it algebraically, you know, get a table, that, 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 but this is geometry and nicely can be done. Okay, any question? Let's get one with the other direction. Okay, what's going to be the other direction is y equal to the x plus two squared. In some problem in your book, they just ask for the description okay, to describe it, but we would like to have, uh, you know, have the graph to do it actually. So it's x plus two, okay, plus is to the right, but we shift it to the left, okay, it's the opposite. For the y is the same, going up and down, but for the x is different, okay, so you can describe it so that you get your points in case you missed it. Okay, so you have to tell us that I'm going to graph y equal to the x square first, then I shift it, okay, shift it uh, to there, this is going to be right, we do the left, then, okay, shift it, shift it to the left, to the left, by two units, two units. Okay, get it first and then shift it. So uh, let's uh, let's do it. Are you done with this one? I'm going to graph it on the next page. 
So again, get the y coordinate x squared first. Okay, the, you know, we give you y coordinate x squared, you know, nothing complicated. It's gonna be the one. So uh, we get the y coordinate x squared. Get these numbers correctly, you get, you get the unit is zero, and this is gonna be one, and this is gonna be a negative one. Okay, and up here, one, one. So this is the original graph. Remember the y is stayed the same, we're just changing the x. Okay, now we want to shift it, what? Uh, twice, to the, to the left. Two to the left, <clears throat> you see, we shift this one first, okay, uh, two units, okay, uh, two units, that was the left, yes. We, we shift this one, two units uh, to the left, okay, this is gonna be the one, so this is gonna be one, uh, two, so this is gonna be the new points for this one, which is gonna be a negative two, negative three, two units, Okay, the zero, zero, two units, it is gonna be one, two. So this is gonna be for the zero. And the one, okay, one, two. This is gonna be a situation that we're going to have for, for one, negative two, makes this is it. Okay, uh, so the point is gonna be just one. So that's gonna be one. Okay, it's a zero and this is gonna be one again. The Y is the same, just the X would change. So uh, this is going to be the graph. Okay, if you can't, we see your, okay, your two units. Okay, this is it. It's going to be two units. Okay, this is uh, shifting uh, two units. Two units, you see your zero. Zero would be changing to what? Uh, this is, uh, it's going to be a situation I'm going to have, okay? and that would give us the, the final the final answer. Okay, so zero is here, is a negative two in the middle. Okay, this one is a negative, uh, negative one, and your negative one would make into the negative three to get your triangular function. Okay, any question? So uh, this is going to be the case, uh, number one, two. Now we have it number two, uh, number three. Number three is gonna be interesting. So how about graphing this one? Y equal to X plus one, all squared, but minus four, minus four. Let's see how we're going to graph this one. Okay, you have to do this one, you know, in a couple of steps. So what we do is, uh, first we start with the y equal to the x squared. Okay, y equal to the x squared first. Then uh, we are going to shift it, shift it to the left, one unit. And then we move it down. Move it down, okay, so it's going to be just a, a combination of these actions. So the solution is going to be, this is what we're going to do. Your parent function would be x squared. You see, there's going to be y equal to the x squared. So what we're going to do, we introduce the first action, y1 we call it. Okay, the y1 is going to be this one, x plus one all squared. Okay, and then, and then we get the y2, which is going to be x plus one all squared minus, minus four. That's how you think about it. We can do it right away. So if you describe it, you, you get some points in case you missed the graph. So you have, you know, most of the points. So what's gonna be a situation they're going to have? Okay, I describe it first for you. You graph y equal to the x square first. Okay, and then, then you are going to shift it Shift it to what? Uh, okay, this is right to the left. To the to the left. Okay, by one unit. By one unit. Okay, and that's going to be the one. 
this is going to be the case and uh, and uh, uh, lower it uh, okay lower it uh, lower it down okay lower it by four units just for information to see what we are going to do it sometimes they ask for the description this is going to be description but we can do it right away so what is the situation I'm going to have you see this is this is what would happen so this is going to be the, the graph <coughs> Okay, you have to do it, you know, in a, in a couple of steps uh, to get this, uh, this number. Okay, I may separate it as, I can do it all of them in one setting, but I need uh, then the three colors. Okay, and this is gonna be the original one. This is a one and one. Okay, this is zero. This is a negative one and this is one. So this is the original one. Okay, this is the original one. I have to shift it to the left one unit. Shift it to the left by one unit. Okay, so the one unit is going to be what? Uh, this is a, a negative one. So I'm going to shift it here. Okay, uh, so this is going to be one point. Then uh, I shift the one, so I get the one here. And this is going to be my zero. Okay, all of them are going to be one, one. So this is going to be the the first portion, if you like. Okay, the first part you can do it separately to get to the to the final one. We accept it, but it's not bad. Okay, so I shift this one one unit to the left. I get the green one. Now I have to pull it down. Pull it down four units. Four units done. You see, it's going to be one, two, one, two, three, four. So I start from here. Everything's going to be four unit done. Okay. So uh, this is going to be the same thing. Okay. This is going to be four units done. I'm sorry. This yes. This is going to be your uh, four units done. Okay, and uh, the other point that I have. Okay, this are gonna be the one. So uh, eventually this is going to be a kind of, okay, these are gonna be the one. This is going to be kind of, okay, a kind of graph that I'm going to have. Okay, roughly, of course get these uh, type of numbers. When it's getting complicated, we ask for description to get the, to get the graph. Okay, you know, if you, we, we don't want to use any calculator, of course, you know, just to get a description of the description of the graph to get these numbers. Okay, so we shifted, we shifted to the left one unit first and we lower it down uh, four units to get the to get the final, to get the final answer. Uh, okay, uh, there is only one more. I'm going to talk about it. Then I put them uh, together for you. Okay. So uh, again, if this is going to be the case, we do this uh, shifting first. Okay, and then you can, you know, can do. So we can have the green one and the blue one in one, one section. Okay, uh, there is an easy operation. We call it the deflection. It's like the symmetric property that we talked about it. You can put the mirror on the x-axis, on the y-axis. So let's uh, describe that one too, to finish it. Okay, so what's gonna be reflection? Okay, put in the mirror. Reflection about the x-axis. About uh, the x-axis. About the x-axis means you put the mirror on the x. You see, that's a symmetric property. 
So in this case, you have to change the x into you know y into the negative y, like the one that we did. Uh, so reflection about the x-axis. So what you're going to do is you are going to graph. Okay, to graph if you like. To graph y equal to the negative f of x. Okay, because that's a reflection. You graph uh, y equal to the f of x first, then you turn it over, then reflect it. Reflect it, okay, about the x axis. You get the mirror image, that's easy. Okay, if you have y equal to the x squared, it's open up part. Y equal to negative x squared, it's going to be open down part. Okay, that's the one. And the last one is reflection about the y axis. Reflection about the y axis. This time you want to graph this one. To graph. Okay, reflection about the y axis. The mirror is on the y, so we change the x into the negative x. If you want to graph this one, y could do the f of negative x. Again, you graph y could do the f of x first. Okay, then you reflect it respect to the to the y-axis. Get the mirror image. Then reflect it. Okay, reflect it about about the y-axis. The y-axis. The first two is more popular than than this one. So we give you one example and then we finish it. Okay, so for example, we want to graph, okay, graph y equal to the negative x squared. That's the one. So it's a, you know, you, you have to change the y into the negative y, so it's a reflection. Mirror is on the x-axis. Okay, so what we do is, uh, this is the solution. So original one is this one. That is the original one. y equal to the x squared. Okay, turn it over. The mirror is on the, on the x-axis. So this is going to be y equal to the negative x squared. Okay, we get the mirror image. Mirror image, you see this is, this is y positive, this is negative. It's like changing the y into the negative y. Changing y into the, into the negative y to get these, uh, these, these operations. Okay, I'll give you a break, we come back and just give you uh, the converse to, you know, we give you some instruction and we ask you to get these, these functions. Uh, I used to teach this uh, section at the end of the course so that you get more, okay, more functions to practice, but uh, it's not a big deal really. It's, it's a good one to know. Uh, again, for the, if you continue taking courses, take college, I'll, uh, you know, just uh, calculus for business. Uh, these are gonna be mildly used over there, not quite a lot. But if your direction is going to be that the college algebra and the trigonometric course, instead of the pre-calculus, you need it quite a lot. Otherwise, you are not going to use it, you know. There are a couple of cases that we're going to use in this book, but we have some other, other option. Okay, uh, so uh, let me just, uh, no, I have to give you a break. Okay, get 10 minutes, then I give you a couple of examples on this one and uh, okay, and uh, we continue to finish it.
Okay, it is 9.40, 8.40. 10 minutes, I come back 8.50 and then we finish it. Okay, see you later.
Okay, give you a kind of example that we expect you to be able to answer, okay, for the test or the quiz. Uh, we give you instruction, just uh, with this operation that I described, okay? And you have to give us the function the other way around. Because the graphing one, you know, you can graph it using graphing calculator or just different devices. But we want to make sure that you know the action that I talk about it, okay? So these are going to be the type of question that we are going to be interested in, okay? So we give you the instruction, you give us the function. So that is it. Okay, example. Uh, so we want you to, to write a function. Okay, example. We want you to write Okay, write the function, write the function whose graph, okay, whose graph is going to be, is the graph, okay, the graph of y equal to the x cube. You see y equal to the x cube is the parent function, if you like. Okay, we call it parent function. Uh, so, uh, whose graph is the graph of y equal to the x cube? That is, now we give it the instruction. Okay, uh, so give us those function with this uh, description. Okay, the first one, the first one give us a function whose graph is going to be y equal to the x cube when it's shifted. Okay, shift it to the left. Shift it to the left. Okay, four units. Four units. Okay, so the, far, the parent function is going to be y equal to the x cube. So we want to get the new function. Okay, the graph is shifted to the left, four units. You know that shifting to the right to the left is, the, you know, this is where you're going to change the x and the direction is going to be different. When you shift it to the, okay, when you shift it to the left, okay, shift it to the left is like a negative, but we you know we use the opposite one, remember? So the answer to this one, okay, so this is going to be y equal to, you see it's going to be x, you shift to the left, left is negative, but use the positive here, remember it's the opposite. So that gives you the function, y equal to the x plus four to the third. Any question? So you have x, uh, x cube. Okay, shifting to the right, to the left, you change the x. Okay, uh, this is gonna be the opposite. Uh, to the left means negative, but you choose to positive over here. Okay, so x plus four to the, to the third is gonna be the, the answer. Any question? Another one? Okay, shift it down. Okay, shift it down four units. Up and down is, you just change the Y. Okay, if it's gonna be up, it's gonna be plus four. If it's gonna be down, it's gonna be negative four. So the answer is going to be solution. Original function with X cube, you push it down, put it down, four units. Okay, for the Y, if you up or done, okay, that's gonna be one. So this is going to, oh, sorry, I missed it. I didn't give you that one, shift it down. I said down, but I didn't write it down. Okay, shift it down, four units. Up and down is the Y axis. If it's a down, it's a negative, it's gonna be up, it's positive. Okay, that's a part B and the part C Part C is going to be reflected. Okay, the mirror. Reflected about, reflected about the x-axis. About the x-axis. Reflecting about the x-axis means you find the mirror image respect to the x. When the mirror image respect to the x, remember, the mirror is on the, the mirror is on the x-axis so it's going to be up and down. 
up is y positive, down is negative. So when you reflex it, you change the y into the negative y. Okay, so this is going to be the situation I'm going to have. And so it's going to be y equal to the x cube, you change it. It's going to be negative y equal to the x cube, which is the same as y equal to the negative x cube. So that's going to be reflection respect to the respect to the x-axis. If you replace respect to the y-axis, okay, in that case, the mirror is on the y, then you have to change the x. So in this case, you change the y into the into the negative y. Okay, so you get the number of them in your in your assignment, if you like, for this group. Any question? So that's one format. You know, they, they just give you one action and ask for the function. But the nice one is the next one. We give you a series of actions, okay? And we want you to give us the resulted function at the end. Okay, we start with the function and we apply the following, you know, operation in order. So we want to know what's going to be the last production, if you like. Okay, so that's going to be the one. We want you to find, okay, find the function, find the function, the function that is finally, okay, that is finally, you have with this expression in your book, finally, okay, graphed, finally graphed after, okay, after each of the following, after each of the following, each of the following uh, transformation, each of the following transformation, those action that we talk about it, following uh, transformations, okay, is applied. is applied to the graph of, okay, to the graph, okay, it's going to be to the graph of y equal to the radical x, for example, that's one, or the absolute value of x would be the same thing. So what is the operation that they need? The operation is first thing to do, they want to reflect it, okay, they want to reflect it, mirror about the x-axis about the x-axis the mirror is on the x you go up and down so you change the y into the negative y then they want uh, to shift it shift okay shift it shift right okay about three units shift right three units, okay, to the right to the left, remember to right is positive, you do the opposite, and then give it the one, and the third one, the third one, you want to shift it down, okay, shift it down, okay, shift down two units, two units. So you do this operation one by one, and then we want to know what's going to be finally the, the formula for the, for the function. Okay, are you ready? We do it one by one. Okay, this is going to be solution. So I start with the radical X, that's the first function. First action, reflection respect to the X. Reflection to the X means, yeah, you see, the mirror is on the X, you change the Y only, okay? Up and down, you see the mirror is on the X, up, down, that's a reflection. So it's going to be Y to the negative Y, so I'm going to call it Y1. It's gonna be simply negative radical X. Here I change the Y into the negative Y, that gives a reflection to the, to the X axis. Next, shift it to the right, three units. Right is positive, we use the negative, okay? It's gonna be x to the x name, minus three. So the y is squared, sorry, y two is gonna be negative, you change the x into the x minus three. 
Okay, that's a reflection to the right. Right is passive, but use the other way around. Then uh, shift it down. Shift it down. Okay, this is going to be y3. And this is a negative x minus 3. Since shifting down is going to be minus, minus 2. So that gives you the final, final product, if you like. Okay, these are, you know, we're just checking these uh, type of properties, as I told you. Depends how we're going to use it in, in, in future. Okay, so we got some idea of the type that we are going to be interested in. Okay, any question? So it's not going to be a, a big deal. Just give you one question and you answer it you quite a lot. So that's uh, section 2.2.5. So uh, we get the 2.6 to almost uh, finish uh, this uh, chapter. A couple of more sections, but uh, easy sections, okay, that we are going to use it in future. But uh, this uh, 2.6 uh, got something that it's uh, quite important for future. Uh, what is this one, 2.6? You see, it's like the real numbers. When we have the real numbers, we can add, subtract, multiply, divide. So you add, subtract, multiply, divide to get more numbers. It's the same for the functions. If you have two functions, you can add them together. Add the function, combine the like terms. You can multiply them together, multiply together. Use the foil method, combine the like terms. Okay, you want divide it, you can divide it. Okay, so we say this operation is going to be point wise, if you like. So it's a kind of an knowing the name of these functions, because there are some properties that we are going to use in future. We want to say that these operations or the properties can be carried from the functions to the sum, the difference, the quotient. So that's the, the idea of this step. There is one a specific operation that we are not going to do it tonight, but we can do the other ones right away, just the definition. Okay, so it's a 2.6. Okay, uh, that's a 2.6. Is it just a, a combination of functions, we call it? Okay, this is a, a combinations of function 2.6, yes. Okay, so it's going to be combinations of functions is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. That's it. Okay, we give you one question on this one. It's very easy to, to operate. You need them for future, okay? That's going to be the one. So, two functions will be given. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. That's it. So, uh, suppose if, if uh, two functions, the functions, Okay, the functions f and g, f and g are given, then the following functions. Okay, the, the functions okay, this is it, f plus g Call it the sum function, okay? Sum function. F minus G. We call it the difference function. Difference. You must know the name for future. Difference function. Okay, then we have the product function, F times G. Okay product, product function. Okay, that's going to be the, the product function. That's a question. To get these numbers. Okay, this is it. Okay, combination of functions, F two functions, F of G given to you. So F plus G, the sum function, F minus G, difference, F times G product, and then we have F over G. Quotient. Okay, quotient function. 
these are going to be defined, we say we define them point-wise. Point-wise means, you know, we just add them together. Okay, these functions are defined. Defined by, and that's it. It's going to be defined, you see, one by one. And that's it. If you want to define f plus g at x, it's simply f of x plus g of x. It's called pointwise operation. You see, f of x plus g of x it goes together. Okay, then it's going to be f minus g, the same thing. It's going to be f of x minus g of x. Okay, and if you want to have a product, f times g at x. So this is going to be f of x times g of x. Okay, and the coach, because there are some other operation, if you know, when you go on and reading different models, but in this case, these are the natural one. So f over g at x is going to be f of x over g of x. And to make sure you know it, and maybe just a couple of easy cases as one question. So uh, these are going to be the, the formulas for the function. Of course, the domain is going to be the common domain. You see the common the domain of the f and the g. So if the x must be in the domain of the f and x must be in the domain of the g, okay? It's, it's going to be just intersection of the domains. And we can take care of the domain later. Uh, in the case of the quotient, you must be careful because the denominator cannot be, cannot be zero. Okay, so these are the type of operation that we have. So just one example, any question? So there are a new elements if you like. We have different quantity in future, especially for calculus. We say we have some quantity, we call them continuity. The graph of a function won't have any hole, any gap. So we have a theorem that will tell you that if f and g are continuous, all these functions are also continuous all these functions are differentiable. So you need them for the various theorems in, in future. Okay, but for the time being, we just uh, want to try. So we give you one example and we ask you, okay, just find them, just a couple of things to determine for us. Okay, uh, so uh, suppose your f of x is going to be, it's going to be 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. This is your f of x and the, the g of x. Okay, g of x is going to be x minus minus 5. Okay, these are two functions that you have. Then they may ask you to find, you know, to find the following. So find each of the, of the following. Okay, just to get to know these notations. So we may ask what is going to be f minus g at x. This is a difference function. Okay, and then we may ask what is fg at, uh, okay, at the negative two. So it's a kind of the product. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, we may ask you what is going to be, okay, number three. Okay, we may ask what is going to be f over g at x. And then we may ask you what is the domain. Okay, uh, the, the domain of, the domain. Domain of this function f over g for these problems. So a couple of, you know, numerical one, etc. Just to check that you are familiar with the notation. You write it down and just, you know, you substitute if you need it and you get these numbers out. Okay, are you ready? It's just a difference. So you have to bring it, the function, find the difference. Okay, solution. So we go with the first one. So f minus g at x is simply f of x 
minus g of x, this is the definition. You know, you bring these numbers down and simplify it. So f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, minus g of x. Make sure to open up the parentheses. You see minus x minus 5. Now you apply the negative sign inside nicely and then you simplify it. So this is going to be equal to, we have a 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So apply the negative sign, it's going to be minus x plus 5. Okay, combine the like terms. So that gives you 2x squared. Okay, we have a negative 3x minus x would be negative 4x or minus 4x. Okay, and 1 and the 5 would be would be 6. So this gives you the difference function. Okay, kind of, you know, two operations that we're going to have. If you are going to be a business major in future, you need the difference function for if you want to find the profit function. The profit is the difference between, you know, the, the cost function and the revenue function. This is the most that you're going to use for the difference function. Okay, any question? So nicely simplify it if it's possible to give us the final, the final answer. So that is uh, part one. The part two is just a product at the negative two. Okay, so we get the, we get the part two it's f times g at negative two. You see, when it's a number, some people, they multiply it together and then uh, they want to find it at negative two, no. Just uh, go as is, okay? We call it the point-wise definition. So this means, this means find f of negative two multiplied by g of negative two. Okay, it's a product of two functions. But you want that this product at a specific number, okay? That's make you, make it so easy for you. So just stay with the number that's given to you. Okay, we are going to find the f of negative two. So we go to the function and we substitute. You see your function is two x squared minus three x plus one. So two x squared, two times a negative two squared. Okay, minus three x minus three times a negative two. Okay, that's minus 3x plus, plus 1. We just substitute. Substitute, the simplified negative 2 squared would be 4. 4 times 2 would be 8. Okay, and this would be a positive 6 and the plus 1. So that gives us 50. So that would be f of, f of negative and negative 2. Okay, any question? Go on, find g of negative two. Okay, g of negative two, your g of x is simply what? It's x minus five. So it's going to be negative two minus five, which is a negative, negative seven. Now put it here. So f times g, that negative two, is going to be the product, we get a 15. 15 times a negative, negative seven. Okay, then you multiply together, the positive negative would be negative. Uh, five times seven, 35. Okay, that give you 105. Okay, so this is it, you see? The product at the negative two, negative two is going to be negative 105 and be done. Any question? I've given this one before in the test. If some people, you see, this, look at the f of x and g of x they multiply these two, just use the FOIL method, simplify it. At the end, they substitute. It's correct, you can do that, but don't do it. Because they ask you just for the number. So it's easier. It's easier, you know, to get the, the numbers rather than going and doing the multiplication first. Okay, any question? So this is the number two. Number three is just a quotient function, f over g at x. The quotient we just divide. So we got the f of x and we have the g of x. Just substitute. So f of x was 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And the g of x was x minus 5. And you're done. 
cannot simplify it and they don't expect you to simplify it. Okay, so that would be a, a quotient function. Any question? But uh, the quotient, they usually ask for the domain of this function. You know that the quotient function is defined if the denominator, okay, if the denominator is not zero. So the denominator would be zero at five. Remember at five, so you have to take out the five. That's a negative infinity, positive infinity. You take out the five for the quotient function. So the domain of the function would be from negative infinity up to the five, parentheses, union with five and positive, positive infinity. Okay, it's a function when you know, when you get a quotient one, you are having the quotient function, but you know that. The top is a polynomial, the bottom is a polynomial, but since you divide, you have to avoid the zero down the denominator. And that's it, any question? We have one big operation, I don't talk about it, composition function, that's the main one of this section, we cover it, okay, on uh, on Wednesday. So uh, just have a look at the, especially piecewise defined function, don't worry about those shifting up, down, these are gonna be just, uh, it's nice to know, okay, for this, especially for the x squared, because we have uh, one chapter we go on, if you know it, it would be useful, I mean, if you don't know it, but make sure you know the instruction, okay? And that would be that would be very, very useful for us. But the piecewise defined function, the graph, and the one that we talk about tonight. Okay, any question? That's it, have a good night, and see you on, on Wednesday. I try to sort out to see what you did on the, on the test quickly, so that we find out, we prepare for the, for your next quiz. Okay, have a good night, bye-bye.